This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. I am on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking, so join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week we are returning to South Africa to view and have a tour of the robust entry model for Royal Cape Catamarans, the Majestic 530. Today, we will 1. Review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels. 2. Do a full tour asking, what would Sylvia say? 3. Naval gaze an innovation and or an adjustment that might make life aboard just a little easier. 4. Have a look at the used market for 3 to 5 year old pre-owned comparables. And 5. Give it a Dave score and compare the results with all our previously reviewed yachts. As always, all this fun will be sandwiched between a pairing of wine and a work of art from the same region as the guest yacht in an effort to capture the culture and people who gave birth to these wonderful vessels. Waves, wine, art and ideas. What a civilized way to spend 30 minutes. So let's get going. From high above Vancouver, we head way west across the Pacific to Vietnam and the yards of last week's future yacht, the Max Cruise Marine Max 48 SC. From here, we take another giant leap west to South Africa and the yards of Royal Cape Catamarans, home of this week's guest yacht, the Majestic 530. Finally, we head northwest to the vineyards of Anthony Rupert and this week's wine pairing, Anthony Rupert Optima 2020. Set on the slopes of the great Dreskin mountain range, the Rupert Wine Estates comprises two historic farms, Gourmains and Anthony Rupert Estate. Today, the estate houses two tasting rooms, four state-of-the-art cellars, a lovingly tended rose garden, vineyards, the Frankenstock Motor Museum, and Dratkiston Stud Farm. Our wine this week is 34% Merlot, 32% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Cabernet Franc, and 4% Petit Verdot. The 2019 vintage yield was significantly higher than the preceding 2018 vintage, which had experienced three years of severe drought. Changing weather conditions during the flowering and fruit set period in October resulted in some, some uneven ripening, but moderate weather during the growing season produced strong growth and denser canopies. The slightly cooler conditions leading up to the harvest produced excellent fruit with balanced acidity and concentrated flavors. Grapes are hand-picked, placed in the small lug boxes and then transported to the cellar in a refrigerated truck. The whole berries are double sorted in the cellar using an optical sorting machine to ensure that only the best qualified grapes are used. The must was fermented dry on the skins and then macerated for an extended period of time after fermentation. This results in a deep color and a good tannin structure. Fermentation took place in a combination of French oak and stainless steel tanks followed by melancholic fer fermentation barrel. Each component was matured separately. Oh, I think you're really gonna like that. Let's go have a look at that boat. Cheers. Having a look at this vessel, it's kind of like what my father used to say, handsome is as handsome does. Try not looking at the outside so much. It sort of looks like an armored personnel carrier. But trust me, the interior and some of the features and the quality that go into this make it worth looking at. The profile 
Uh, nothing to write home about. We've already seen much of this on the 570, and I do wish the boys over there at Royal Cape would build themselves some new uh, molds because what they do deserves to be shown off in a much more hmm, flamboyant and modern way than is currently the case. Looking at the profile and numbers here now, we are comparing the Majestic 530 with the Lagoon 55, the Privilege 510, and finally the Nisna 550, which has yet to be launched. Looking across these, you can see that it is the Nisna 550 that has the greatest upwind sail area at 196 square meters. That's followed by the Lagoon at 181, uh, the Majestic at 158, and then, of course, the Privilege at 145. Hopping on to the cabin top now, you can see that the Lagoon and the Nisna both have a lovely fly lounge. Actually, the Nisna has the fly lounge with a bulkhead mid helm, and the Lagoon has a full fly bridge. Uh, my preference would be the mid-level bulkhead helm so that I can communicate with the fly lounge and the cockpit and the saloon. But, I mean, the Lagoon is a beautiful vessel. Uh, the Privilege uh, has nothing really on top there, very functional, lots of room for uh, solar. And the Majestic 530 has lots of solar, and you'll see some rather innovative ways. But again, looking down on it, she does look somewhat military. Hopping into the saloon, you can see here, uh, you know, the, the sheer size of the Lagoon 55 saloon. But then gander over at the Majestic. You've got a lot of space in that saloon. Um, although the Nisna 550 takes the cake by the looks of things by probably 25%, maybe even 30%. Um, all of them very nicely laid out. The Lagoon 55 is, is really like a, a floating condominium. Uh, the amount of open space there that you can see, it really is reflected very clearly when you're inside it. Uh, getting into the privilege a little tighter, but uh, I mean tighter, that's, that's a matter of, of uh, perspective, but very beautifully finished. Um, you know, the, the, the woods and the veneers they use, top quality. Uh, the Majestic 530, uh, a very significant sized saloon. It feels a little more cluttered because there's a lot going on in there, uh, but their finishes are stunning. High gloss, high quality veneers. I mean, once you get past looking at the outside and walk on board, um, it really does look like a yacht, like a real yacht, um, a, an absolutely beautiful level of finish at, at every uh, angle. The Nisna 550, uh, yet to be seen, but uh, if you've been on board a Nisna, and I was just on board my first one a couple of months ago, I am anticipating an absolutely stunning level of finish inside this beautiful vessel. Looking at the tonnage here, I'm only going to compare the Lagoon, the Majestic, and the Nisna because, uh, you know, they're all three to five feet longer than the Privilege. Um, but in those three, it is the Nisna 550 well out in front at 19.6 tons. Uh, next one, not doing too bad given the construction and the sheer size of this thing. It's the Majestic 530 at 20 tons. Uh, and then the big girl, the Lagoon 55 at 27.7 tons. Looking now down into the uh, accommodations, uh, you know, the Lagoon, absolutely unbelievable. Uh, all walk around, three-sided berths. Um, everything feels large and in charge. It, it's really something. The Privilege 510 now, you've got this dramatic forward owner's suite. Um, your headroom is sacrificed a little bit there, but wow, you get on either side in those uh, hulls and look across, and it is nothing short of breathtaking. Um, rest of the accommodations, quite nice, although, um, you know, a little uh, tight in those aft, four aft uh, berths, um, you know, typical wall-to-wall -wall scenario. Uh, the Majestic, uh, you can see the sheer width of those hulls. Um, and so as a result, 
uh, you do have a fair amount of space around the four aft berths um, in the in the aft section, uh, and you've got variations on the theme uh, forward where you could have a thwart ship, uh, you can have a full hull, all of that good stuff. Uh, the Nisna, we've got an owner suite with a forward four aft, uh, sorry, a forward a thwart ship similar to uh, Balance. Uh, and a massive hull suite for the owner, uh, and then a very traditional um, uh, guest hull with uh, forward a thwart ship and aft for aft berth. Um, again, dying to see the interior finish on this a bigger version of the 500. Uh, if it's up to their standard, this is going to be a spectacular vessel. Okay, hopping into the numbers. Looking at the top line here, this might uh, surprise you a little bit. So um, if we're looking at euros here, uh, the uh, most uh, inexpensive one uh, is the Majestic 530 at 1.238. That is followed by the Lagoon uh, at 1.5, then the Nisna at 1.6, and the Privilege at 2.3. Now, these are very deceptive when it comes to sail away because both the Majestic and the Nisna behave very similar to um, Exquisite, and they load up these boats. I struggled to find 100 or 200 additional in, in accessories on either of them. Uh, so it, I want to point out the sail away here in USD. Uh, your, your best offer, of course, is the Majestic 530 at 1.450 for a 53-foot yacht. I, admittedly, looks like an armored personnel carrier floating around, but once you get inside, pretty extraordinary and somewhat built like an armored personnel carrier. Uh, next up is the Nisna, an amazing value at 2 million even. Then you've got the Lagoon 55 at 2.4. Bear in mind, at the Nisna, for half a million less, you are getting a fully custom yacht. Then you've got the Privilege at 6.93, of course, it is always fully custom. As we head down into the length overall, it's the Nisna in the lead at 55 even. Uh, at the waterline, it's the Nisna at 54.9. And on the beam, it's the Nisna at 29.75 feet. Uh, as we look to draft, it's the Majestic at uh, 4.59 feet, followed by the Nisna at 4.9 feet. As we get an air draft, it's the Lagoon at 95 feet. And then light ship displacement, we've already talked about that. It's the Nisna at 19.6 tons. Uh, upwind sail area, again, it's the Nisna at uh, 196.4 uh, square meters or 2,112 square feet. And then getting into tankage, uh, it is the Majestic uh, right across at 1,200 liters of fuel, 1,000 liters of water, and 400 liters of uh, black water capacity. I want to remind you, uh, we'd love to standardize these. I wish manufacturers would standardize the data that we receive. Uh, if you're talking to a manufacturer, poke them a bit and get them to start including interior square footage, exterior square footage, interior enclosed sp uh, uh, storage in cubic feet, uh, exterior lockers in cubic feet, and then total fridge and total freezer capacity. It's hit and miss there. Some of them have it, some of them don't. But those, those real key measurements for livability are absolutely imperative, and very few people bother to include them. As we look across here, I did manage to get um, fridge and freezer capacity, uh, and in those cases, it is the Majestic at 260 on the fridge and 210 liters on the freezer capacity, uh, which really is quite substantial and, and, and a distance in front of the others. Getting into the more technical details here, looking at hull construction and materials, uh, way out in front is the Nisna 550 with uh, a pure vinyl lester resin on e-glass with a foam core. Uh, next up is the Privilege with a uh, foam core, a layer of vinyl ester, and then the ball balance in polyester. And then uh, taken up the aft are the Lagoon and the Majestic 
uh, polyester with uh, balsacor uh, and um, solid laminate under the waterline. As we head now into um, max uh, battery capacity, I could really only find it uh, on the Nisna. Uh, it maxes out at uh, 33.1 kilowatts of battery capacity. As far as standard battery capacity, uh, it's the Nisna in the lead at 22.8 kilowatts. Uh, the closest one would be the Majestic at 15.8 kilowatts. <clears throat> now, maximum factory solar, um, the Nisna is at 2,800 watts. The Majestic can be fitted out with an amazing 6,000 watts, both of them using ventilated glass. Getting into the performance indicators, uh, right across the board, the Nisna takes the prize. So, sale area to displacement, or an indicator of power, it's the Nisna at 29.2, which is uh, indicative of an extreme racing boat. Uh, sale area to displacement, which is indicative of heaviness, lowest number wins, it's the Nisna at 105.8, which is indicative of a light classification. And then looking at KSP, which is indicative of a comparative potential speed at 10 knots of wind, it's the Nisna at 86% of wind speed. So looking across that one, the next closest is the Privilege, which isn't a real big surprise. People talk about the weight of the Privilege and question its sailability. This boat does really well for what it's made to do, for the level of luxury, for the level of security and the way it's built. You know, 71% of wind speed, nothing to sneeze at. Then it's the, it's a big surprise, Majestic uh, at 69%, and finally the Lagoon at its pretty standard 65% of wind speed. If you're enjoying the content, please do subscribe Send this off to a couple of friends. Have them subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and please leave me a comment or two. I learned so much from the audience. It's greatly appreciated. For those of you who would like to, I've started a Patreon page so that you can access the actual spreadsheets themselves if you wish. It's a couple of bucks a month and if you're interested, well worth your time. Thanks very much. Okay, having a look about, what would Sylvia say? <laughs> um, I'd have to blindfold her and get her inside first because she wouldn't even board it based on the exterior aesthetic. And I hate to sound shallow, but I'm probably with her. Uh, but there are so many technical aspects of this boat that are extremely attractive. Right down to what you can immediately see here is an absolute football feel sized hydraulic dinghy lift <clears throat> and then all of your uh, non-slip uh, foam coatings on the deck spaces which are really really comfortable and extremely safe. There, there's that uh, uh, lift again it is really quite something but stepping up and on board the first thing I saw were incredibly beautiful solid stainless steel handrails all around this vessel. Then you get looking at this cockpit they have a raised ceiling in this thing my six foot uh, seven friend could easily enjoy a walkabout inside this cockpit also look at your clears and your drop downs there nicely packaged in and the ceiling of of the bimini of course very nicely finished looking around in here you've got so much entertainment space uh it it, it really it, i actually like this uh, cockpit better than their larger 570. It really is quite spectacular. Um, having a look at the helm position here, you know, it's it's fine. It's a, it's a mid-level helm, uh, extremely well protected. Everything comes back to the helm. You have all your winches there. You've got solid glass um, uh, windscreens with wipers on them. So, uh, you know, this is a this is a well thought out vessel. Like I said, it's the warmer personnel carrier of of cruising catamarans. But once you're on board and looking at the features and the level of comfort and the ideas, you really like it. I mean, look at the quality of this stainless steel here. 
Every aspect of it is beautiful. Look at the surfaces anywhere you're going to walk. You've got that beautiful, uh, it's not flexi teak, but it's, it's, it's that surface that allows you to walk carefully. Now, those solar panels, not only are they glass, not only are they ventilated, but you'll know a wee handle on the side that we'll explore just a little later here. Again, everywhere you look, beautiful solid handrails and every surface that you walk on you have that beautiful safe grip as uh, our friend walks up onto the roof here he's going to demonstrate this incredible um, solar panel bank here there it goes so when you're at dock and if you need the extra you just slide this out and you're you know, doubling up on your solar capacity. It, it's not pretty, but holy mackerel, is it practical. That's how you get 6,000 watts of solar, like glass solar ventilated on this beast. The only one like that that I can remember is the exquisite uh, 60 solar sail. Okay, heading forward. Now, here's something really, really cool. Look at these seats that, that are on the, on the integrated into the rails. Now, the only thing that I would like better than those loungers integrated in the rail is if they literally popped up and out of the way, similar to the princess seats, uh, actually the forward princess seats we saw on the Hylus 57. Uh, but as you scan around here, yeah, it looks like the outside of an armored personnel carrier, but there are so many neat little touches like these wonderful integrated lounges. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't have the faux front cockpit, but those lounges are absolutely fantastic. And I mean, you could land an F-16 on this forward deck. Look at the storage you have. You could probably provision this thing for six months. And then, of course, just break out your bean bags, and you, you've got surface area here. There's three layers of surface area to put your bean bags. You could have eight, nine people happily sitting up here with room to spare, three on each level. It's absolutely absurd. So, um, you know, if you recall the 570, you had even more. Literally, you could land a helicopter on that thing. Um, having a look around here, you can see how sturdy those, the front windshield is. I mean, again, you're fully enclosed and safe. Now here's something nice. Look at how safe you are getting to the head of that sail with that cage in there. Um, so stairs, uh, uh, steps up there, and then you got the cage keeping you safe. Then you've got your, uh, beautiful glass solar panels, that actually extend out as you need to double up on your solar if you need to um, without sacrificing the entire uh, roof. You've still got a good view of your sails through the windows in the bimini and you are absolutely dry when you're uh, uh, piloting uh, this vessel. Again, I want to point out every little surface you put your feet has this grippy uh, uh, um, plastic stuff on it uh, so that your your level of safety is outstanding and look at those beautiful solid stainless steel rails and they are high and they're not just high but they're thick I mean these things are beefy um, and and all the stainless steel work is just top-notch I, I again I love this thing um, I just wish they'd get a new mold, like updated a bit, because the work here is beautifully done. Uh, they got a lot of tremendous ideas. They have a lot of tremendous storage. You've got your built-in tank holders. You've got the mother of all barbecues on the back of this thing. I mean, it's as big as the one on my back porch. It's just huge. You've got built-in fridges and freezers. You've got beautiful stools here. Um, here's another L area here, deep freeze, sitting right there. Um, you've got your washer out here, and you can have your washer dryer out here because you have so much cover and you're so well protected, so you don't even have to have it inside. 
ice makers, additional fridges. I mean, the the the, the freezer fridge capacity. Well, we saw it. It's extraordinary. Uh, two hundred and sixty liters and two hundred and ten for fridge and freezer, respectively. Now look around the interior of this saloon. Look at the quality of woodwork, and of course, all of this is customizable at this price. So, I mean. <laughs> It's one and a half million U.S. or less for a fully customized, robust, 53-foot beast of a catamaran uh, that actually shows better performance than a lagoon, which admittedly isn't tough to do, but you're getting so much. Um, look at all your appliances, top quality, everything is stowed away, nice covers on your, your liquor cabinets, your uh, uh, microwave is nicely tucked away, even a beautiful spot for your cappuccino machine. Um, as I said, it, it, it's a massive galley and it does take up a lot of space, but wow, it's really something. Heading down the stairs, I mean, look at all the details, the frosted glass with a pattern in it for your shower stall, your shared shower stall. Heading to the aft here, beautiful Corian and all the surfaces, um, the, the glossy, beautiful woodwork, huge TVs, um, lots of stowage. Uh, everything is, is there for you. Now look in this head. Uh, it's a dry head. All of them are dry heads. Um, beautiful floor detail here. Those huge windows, uh, kind of oyster-esque vertical seascape windows in the shower of all places but there you go maybe a bit of an exhibitionist in the crowd um but look at all the stowage you have here now let's do a little bit of navel gazing shall we the biggest thing i worry about with living on board a cat is sleep i sleep with the window open and with few if any covers even in the winter here in vancouver Air conditioning on a boat would be mandatory for me, but the cost and complexity, not to mention the energy use of a zoned AC system, seems a little daunting. What if I could actively cool just my bed? Wouldn't that be the most efficient and comfortable solution? Well, it turns out you can. It's called the Eight Sleep Pod. Eight Sleep basically uses similar tech as was used in the Apollo mission spacesuits to keep the astronauts at the right temperature in the harshest environments. That being a water-cooled or heated active grid that modifies the bed temperature between 55 Fahrenheit to 110 Fahrenheit, adapting to your sleep preferences. The active grid, which is part of the mattress, is connected by a hose to the hub, which acts as the system's controller. The hub's reservoir is filled with water and hydrogen peroxide that cycles through the grid that is just below a layer of memory foam on the top of the mattress. After setting your bedtime and waking hours, the pod automatically adjusts the bed's temperature to ensure it's always ideal for your sleep. The pod adds personalized temperature control to each side of the bed so you sleep better every night. The pod can cool or warm each side of the bed as low as 12 degrees Celsius or 55 and as high as 43 degrees Celsius or 110. So you and your partner can both sleep perfectly without cooling the entire boat or even your hull. Okay, back on board looking at the acres of stunningly beautiful high gloss veneer i mean wow there's your really nice desk area again beautiful corian countertops beautiful little settee there mirrors in the background to open up the sense of space lots of room for your uh, printer and uh, again look at this fabulous head in the aft here's your other beautiful um, guest berth and they have <laughs> skylights uh, of course they have lots of ventilation in the ceiling in the slanted forward windows uh, across the way in the ports and then you get into uh, their head and it's gorgeous matching Corian the incredible uh, floor detail beautiful uh, windows that, that look out either side of this hull, uh, in between uh, the hulls and, of course, uh, to the outside. 
um, beautiful uh, fiddles, stainless steel fiddles around anywhere that you would set anything down. Uh, easy to grab on to, so lots of safety. I mean, they thought of literally every, it's incredibly high quality. Look at even the stainless cap on that rail going up the stairs. And then again, look at all the refrigeration and freezer space we have here. Uh, it's absolutely spectacular. Huge island counter in the center there, beautiful settee with a fold-out table, lots of stowage for wine and booze. Uh, now we're heading, and again, I, I couldn't help myself looking at the quality of these handholds and the detail of the stainless work. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and again, everywhere there's a flat surface, there's this fiddle surrounding it. Uh, here is your aft cabin. Again, it is a wall-to-wall -wall with a little cutout at the bottom. So it is, unfortunately, a butt scoot bed. Uh, but the sense of space and air in that cabin is absolutely outstanding. And then you have this gorgeous head, um, beautiful shower, uh, and, and then those wonderful seascape windows looking out there. Um, Back out here into the cabin, you notice there's uh, mirrors on the wall there. When was the last time you saw that extensive use of mirrors, which is logical in a cramped boat, uh, just to give your... Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at the pantry. I had forgotten about this pantry. Absolutely stunning. Like I said, guys, I, I cannot believe the level of quality and finish and ideas that uh, um, Royal Cape puts into their boats. Just... Would somebody finance new molds for them, please? These are beautiful boats uh, on the inside. Um, every surface, beautiful fiddles surrounding it. Uh, and, and everywhere you look, it's robust, it's strong, nice little settee there leading up into this absolutely gorgeous cabin. This one isn't a butt scoot bed. You can move your way all the way around that. Admittedly, you're at height, but look at the sense of space you have here because you not only have the vents above you, you have those forward-looking windshields. They have vents in them. The sense of light and space in it. They got a mirror on the side of the bed there. Again, every thought has gone into making this spacious and comfortable and luxurious. And it really, really is. Can you imagine? I mean, I can easily imagine living on this. Bear in mind, this is only a 53-foot yacht. So it's a foot longer than a, a balance 526. Um, and you have things like twin sinks in, in, in the master. Uh, absolutely stunning, everything that they've done. Uh, and if, if only we could maybe update it a bit, uh, 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 just, just refine the external and uh, a few touches here and there. Uh, I mean, man, they really have done a beautiful job. Okay, let's head back up the stairs here. And uh, uh, we're just about at the end of our tour. I had to take another close look at the stairs. You know how I like to have a, a look at those. And here we are back in this amazing uh, saloon with tons of ventilation, forward, upper, cross ventilation, beautiful wood trim, an absolutely spectacular boat. Okay, pre-owned comparables. What are we going to look at here to compare it to the Majestic uh, 530? First up, we are looking at a used Royal Cape. Uh, 2019, so we're looking at a, a four-year-old boat. Bearing in mind a new one is 1.450. They're asking a million for this. Uh, I, I, I would, you know, I'd, I'd buy a new one for that Delta simply because um, I know 1.450 is probably high uh, and I can get exactly what I want. Next up, we're looking at a Bally 5.4, a 2021, so a two-year-old boat. Uh, our sail away again is 1.450. Uh, they're asking 1.695. Uh, you know, the 5.4, she's a big boat. She's got lots of good stuff on her. Um, she's a little bit more attractive on the outside, but again, she's something like a large shoebox with a sail on it. Uh, I don't know. This would be a real toss-up. Uh, I'd probably save 
200 grand and have a custom uh, 530. Uh, nothing them, n- neither of them are anything to write home about on the exterior. And the, the Majestic 530 is just so extraordinary on the inside. And when you're on board, all the space and the spaces, uh, I, I think the Majestic takes it. Next up, we're looking at a, a 2019 Katana 53. I threw this one in just to throw in a little performance comparative. Uh, bearing in mind, our custom uh, 530 is going to be 1.450, and they're asking um, 1.688, 1.7 for a um, three-year-old boat. Uh, this one would be a little tougher. There, there are things about the new Katanas that I hate. Somebody explain to me what happened to Katana between 2005 and today, because an 05 Katana 582 is the most stunning vessel I've ever seen, specifically the interior finishes. And the new 53, although I love their uh, layouts and the things they've done there, the level of finish is is more bally than Katana. Uh, this would be a hard one to decide. And finally, a bit of a surprise one here is a 2020 Naughty Tech 54 Fly. This has got to be a one-off boat. I know that the uh, 541, 542 could be significantly customized, and they talked about a fly, but I never saw one until I saw this used boat. They're asking 1.620. Uh, for a um, two-year-old boat, three-year-old boat uh, versus 1.450. The level of finish on Nautitex is way up there. Um, I would have to go with the Nautitex on this one. So there you go. Okay, monohull heresy. What do we compare this to in a monohull? Again, we add 20% to the length. We come up with around you know, 65 feet, and we're looking at a 2019 Genoa 64. They're asking 1.6 versus our 1.450. Well, if I could blindfold Sylvia and get her onto the uh, Majestic, it would be the Majestic because, uh, you know, the, the comfort of actually doing a circumnav on that vessel, it would be as fast, if not faster, than the Genoa. It wouldn't heal. <clears throat> it has a level of finish that is second to none. So uh, the only issue is <laughs> the outside of the Genoa 64 is a stunningly beautiful thing to see. Uh, but <clears throat> I would have to go with the Majestic on this. Next up, we're looking at a 2018 Beneteau Oceanus Yacht 62 with the hard top, beautiful yacht, they're asking 1.4 million versus our 1.45, and it's about a four to five year old vessel. Um, I would still have to go. I, I'd be happier living on board the Majestic, as long as I didn't look back when I was driving away. Next up is a 2018 Bavaria C65. I think there were only three of these ever built before Bavaria was sold. Um, they're asking, uh, one, about a million bucks. Uh, that's a heck of a price for this vessel. Uh, I've, but it has been sitting on here for what seems to be years. Um, I would seriously consider this. It's a $450,000, $400,000 Delta. This is a stunning boat in the interior and it's a big boat. I, I, yeah, it, it'd be iffy each way. Dufour, 61, 2021. Um, it's a nice boat. We've already reviewed this. We've done a tour of this one. They're looking for 1.244. Uh, no, I'd, I'd pay the 1.450 uh, and get a level of quality interior and comfort again, as long as I didn't turn around when I uh, was driving away from my boat. Finally, a 2022 Genoa Yacht 65. A uh, really nice vessel, hard top, the whole shebang. They want uh, two million, two point one. No, <laughs> um, I, 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 you just can't justify the delta. If all you're thinking of is what is my level of comfort, what's my level of safety, all of those things for a circumnav, it would have to be the majestic. So she's done really well as long as we don't look back when we're driving away in the dinghy. 
Okay, let's look at the Dave score. Where did she end up? Well, we've done a lot of yachts, and oh, their green line isn't... Th There's the green line. She's about two-thirds of the way down. We, uh, on the interior elegance, we got a seven. It could be an eight, but it, there are certain elements that are dated. However, there's certain elements that are so well thought out, like those fiddles everywhere. I don't know, seven or eight. Uh, exterior elegance, it's a six. I mean, it, it, it's just ugly. <laughs> uh, although, uh, you know, your seating positions at the helms, your visibility, your comfort, that, that, uh, the extensiveness of that cockpit, it's outstanding. So, so much of this is impacted by the aesthetic and that's so subjective. I don't know really what to say there. Comfort in the interior, easily a seven. Exterior, easily a seven. Um, quality, a seven. Uh, performance, a six. Uh, the lazy sailor, a seven. Uh, condo, an eight. I mean, this if there's ever was a condo, this is it. Uh, geek, there's not much to geek out about on this boat. It's a six. Uh, uh, and value for the money, it peaks out at an eight, which is a high score. Uh, giving us 69 out of 100 and putting her in the realm of a leopard... 42 to 461, uh, FP 45, Outremer 45, uh, Lagoon 51. It's about the right spot when you balance everything out. It could go, you know, it, it, I don't think it could, that score could ever go down. It could certainly go up given some of these categories. For our Art of the Region this week, we're looking at Anton Gurick. He was born in Johannesburg in 1947. He traveled extensively with his parents, being in the hotel trade. He mainly went to school in one of the coastal cities in South Africa, namely Port Elizabeth. He painted his first oil painting at the age of eight and was immediately recognized as a talented young person as he painted the staff of one of the hotels. Apart from his interest in music, he also studied pharmacy. He attended numerous art courses at Technician PE and with other popular South African artists. He was particularly influenced by Errol Boyley, Wessel Marais, Isabel Leroux, uh, Peter Millard, and Dale Elliott, but has developed his own distinctive style of painting. Well, that's our Waves, Wine, Art, and Ideas this week. As you can see, I'm very torn with the Majestic. I love some of their innovative touches, some of their practical touches. The practical is the word I could say about this vessel. I have no doubt it will not squeak. I have no doubt there's more resin in there that you could shake a stick at. Um, it, it, it's built like an armored personnel carrier. It's... It's, you really do have to get over the aesthetic and like it or not boats are like art and there's a massive amount of motion in that purchase it you heck if you're spending a million and a half bucks or two million bucks you need to like what you're looking at so i'd encourage the guys at royal cape let's build out a new mold and get these vessels to where they should be because you're doing some spectacular work Stay with us next week. We've got another terrific vessel. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Have a great week. Cheers.